Chichen Itza, we know, calculates time, but we won't go into that today. We will talk about its calculation of the Earth's circumference. We'll also talk about how it plots a loxodrome and where that loxodrome leads us. And we will discuss the great arc circle and the waypoint that points back to Chichen Itza from the loxodrome heading. Finally, we will also talk about the great arc circle that points from Chichen Itza back to Giza. The math proof for Chichen Itza. The numbers required are 14.3 miles and 133 feet. Once again, those are the distances that we do need, and we do find them from the tip of the pyramid, and also, once again, from the length of the slant side, from the top of the pyramid to the base of the pyramid, or along the stairs. That distance is the required 133 feet. We don't know if there is a chamber underneath the pyramid of Chichen Itza, and I would like to be the first to excavate and see if there is, in fact, a chamber. As you can see that this math leads the pyramids to be exact in their calculation of the circumference of the Earth to approximately an error of a half mile. Now the reason why Egyptians were off by 10 miles is because the Egyptians did not use an accurate pi. And just because of the fact that it's off by 1 1,000th. So because of that error, the error of the Egyptians is 10 miles in calculating the circumference of the Earth using their pyramid. The Mayans had a more accurate pi. I put four decimal places, but I believe that it's actually more like six or seven decimal places. I believe that their sign of one degree was a lot more accurate. The Mayans did not use fractions, so I believe that they used inverses or reciprocals. We're going to start a loxodrome from Chichen Itza. That loxodrome, if taken out to two and a half times the diameter of the Earth, will lead us to Cambodia. If we zoom in on this loxodrome path, we find that it falls right on the tip of Angkor Wat. As you can see in Angkor Wat, there is a heel stone along this line on the right side of the screen. That heel stone has no sister stone, whereas all the other stones and structures in Angkor Wat have a twin. This stone does not, and it lies along the loxodrome. If we were to travel back towards Cancun, leaving Angkor Wat, we would find another place in Cambodia that looks like Angkor Wat. It appears to be abandoned. This place has a peculiar temple that is not placed in the center. It is actually placed in the upper left-hand corner, and as you can see, there's a road that leads to that old temple. That temple also lies on the path of this loxodrome. This little square plot of what I refer to as an abandoned Angkor Wat is very important because this is the intersection point of where the Great Arc Circle from Chichen Itza meets with the Loxodrome in Cambodia. It is where they both intersect right on this plot of land. Here is a clip to show this. Here again we find ourselves in this second Angkor Wat station. We follow the line back towards Chichen Itza. And as you can see, as we zoom in, you'll see that this line cuts perfectly along the diagonal of the Chichen Itza pyramid. I believe that pyramids that were oriented true north and south, east and west, were pyramids used for local navigation and expansion of an empire. And that the pyramids that were offset from True North are actually lines that connect the pyramids and Stonehenges over greater distances. So here's starting at Chichen Itza once again. We have to find that stone that marks a direct path back to Giza. And at Chichen Itza, we do in fact find that. If you notice, there's a smaller pyramid that is offset from Chichen Itza. If we were to line that pyramid up with the pyramid of Chichen Itza, it would take us in a straight line directly back to Giza. So now that we perform this starting from Giza showing Stonehenge, showing Chichen Itza, let's try this with another pyramid that is not part of our presentation up to this point. We're going to skip to the Temple of the Sun in Mexico. 
and we're going to shoot a LOXA drone from the Temple of the Sun. We're going to use one-third of the polar circumference of the Earth. If we use that calculation and zoom in on our LOXA drone, we find that we are in the Valley of Xi'an, China. Up until this point, I did not know that there were pyramids in China. And if we follow this loxodrome, you'll see that there are pyramids oriented all around this loxodrome. Here, you will see three pyramids. Looking to the next frame, we find another pyramid. The next frame, we'll see two large pyramids and four to seven smaller pyramids. We will see another large pyramid and a small pyramid paired together above the line. And we'll see another very large pyramid below the line. Once again, I did not know there were pyramids in China until I did this experiment. Now let's see if we can use the pyramids in China to point back towards the Pyramid of the Sun in Mexico on a great arc circle or waypoint. So if we line up a diagonal of the pyramid in China and follow it, we will come back to Teotihuacan along the diagonal of the top of that pyramid. Here we are zooming down into a closer view of the Xi'an pyramid in China. How it lines up and shoots a direct great art circle back to Teotihuacan, Temple of the Sun, in Mexico. The Nazca Lines also do this. The Nazca Lines are peculiar lines in the desert of Peru. They're very long lines, six to seven miles long. We can see many lines here, but the two most prominent lines are the ones we will focus on. The first one is the one that travels from east to west. If we follow that cross, it leads us to a destination point at 27 degrees, 12 minutes, and 52 seconds. That coordinate leads us to Easter Island. And if you notice the coordinates of Easter Island are 27 degrees, 7 minutes, 16 seconds, and 109 degrees west. If you were to follow that about a quarter of the circumference of the Earth, or one-fourth the distance around the Earth, it would lead us to the islands of Tonga. So once again, here's the line. We are going to take it out so you can see where the Nazca line is. Now we're going to put the red line back and it paints a direct arc and passes right along Easter Island. And then it goes straight to the islands of Tonga which is what we will be talking about next. Now we're going to talk about arc lines through Tonga. Each of these paths cut into the jungle lead up to a small Stonehenge that is located in Tonga. There were many other stones surrounding this structure, but all those stones were destroyed in a civil war. As you can see, those lines led to Tahiti, Cook Islands. All of these islands were controlled by the Tongan Empire. If we follow another path cut through the jungle by the ancient Tongans, it will lead us to another island that was also under the control of the Tongan Empire. And if you come back to the island of Tonga, we will see that there is a heel stone. And that heel stone, when lined up with the arch, creates a direct path to the islands of Samoa. This area where the Tongan Stonehenge lies was where all the goods that were traded were brought and taxed. And then shipped on. As you can see, there was another path cut into the jungle and that path goes to Fiji which was also next on the list to be conquered by the Tongans. In fact there are many islands in Fiji 
where the islanders still speak tongan to this day so if we were to zoom in we could see that this is actually my mother's town this exact area is where all the goods were traded in the south pacific brought to this one point taxed and then shipped onto its destination similar to a port authority this same line that goes to samoa can also be lengthened to the islands of hawaii and if we were to go south we can see that on that same line that points to Samoa and Hawaii, you could also navigate your way to New Zealand.